Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on bone health and health span. Do you have osteoporosis or osteopenia and you are looking for the best tools to add to your approach to bone health? If you've considered a vibration plate or a whole body vibration system, you may want to stick around because I'm going to go into some of the research that helps support using these tools and what you want to look for when you're looking for one of these things and exactly how beneficial are they. We'll see you soon. All right, so what is a vibration blade or a whole body vibration unit? Well, when I think about these things, I think about the exercise equipment that came out of the 1960s and 70s, you know, the, the belt that was going around people and it was all designed for fat loss and it just kind of made you go Bleh. Well, the newer vibration plates are similar in some ways, meaning that they still jiggle your body, but they do it in a different way. So vibration plates now, modern versions, aren't belt driven like that. Um, but they are basically mechanical plates that move underneath your feet and they move in specific patterns at specific speeds and at specific uh, volumes or displacement. And adjusting those variables can have an impact on what you're trying to improve. Now, why they work and how they work, it gets really complex with the physics. And some of this stuff isn't even really that well proven, but some of the theories go along like this, that when you're standing on something that's uneven, your muscles are firing in very abnormal patterns. So, you know, very different than like walking or exercising or even resistance training, which you guys know I like so much, but the little muscle fibers are firing in a pattern that's very different. And it's very awkward for the body with this thing going like this underneath it. Um, and that has a, a series of downstream effects. Some of the things that have been shown in literature include an increase in testosterone, an increase in growth hormone. It seems to improve both blood flow in not only the big vessels, but also the little blood vessels. And it also it helps improve what's called the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is not often talked about, but it is another circulatory system in the body that helps with drainage. So there is some belief that it helps with mitochondrial function, it helps with cell function, uh, because it's helping to clear out debris and it's helping to improve uh, blood flow in the, the really small cells, the small vessels uh, in all the, the soft tissues of the body. So the question we have to answer today is, does it improve bone mass, bone quality, can it reduce fractures? And then are there any other things that we're interested in, most specifically around muscle mass? All right, so in the search for does a whole body vibration unit improve bone health, I was really looking for a good study using a, a whole body vibration or WBV as a specific intervention. So kind of like if we were looking at a, a drug trial where the drug is the intervention, I was looking for a study that had the, the vibration unit as an independent intervention. And then fortunately I found one where not only was that true, but also they had controls, meaning people that didn't do that, but then they also had a third arm to the study, which was a resistance, uh, a resistance arm. So you had people that were doing the whole body vibration, people that were doing just resistance alone, and then controls that did nine, none of the two. And so this was a great study from 2004 on 75 people. Now I would have liked it to be a little bit bigger, but we'll take what we got. So again, you had those three arms and the machine that they were using, they had some very specific parameters. So they would start slow and by slow, they meant low frequency and low amplitude. So those are the two important variables when you're looking at different machines. So frequency is the, it's the speed or how often the thing is moving. And then amplitude is how much it's moving. So you can make it more difficult by increasing both the amplitude, so it's moving more, or the frequency, it's moving faster, okay? So you can manipulate those two variables. So in this study, they used a frequency that was between 35 and 40 hertz, and hertz is the, the unit for, um, for frequency, and then amplitude 1.7 and 2.5 millimeters. So it's not moving very much, but it's moving pretty quickly. As far as volume, they did this for 30 minutes, three times a week. And what they were doing on the, on the plate was either what they called stand, just static and essentially standing, usually with your knees slightly bent, or they were actually doing some kind of exercises like a, a squat or like a single leg squat, some kind of you know, body weight resistance training on the machine, but not with actual weights, okay? 
And then there's the resistance group. So the resistance group did basically just two exercises, leg extensions and then uh, leg press. So they're both lower body, kind of trying to mimic that same effect of standing on your legs, but with resistance. And they started lighter doing kind of two sets of, of 20 reps to max. And they got higher up to four sets with, uh, I think it was three sets of 12 and one set of eight. Um, and that's eight reps max. So they were trying to go to a high enough amount of weight so that you uh, could only do eight reps. So that's pretty heavy, right? So that's pretty good. So they had now the, the whole body vibration group and the resistance group, and then of course the controls that did nothing. Now the resistance group worked out for about an hour. So there is a difference in time there, but they did a 20 minute warm up, And then again, they had up to four sets of each exercise. So up to eight sets uh, in a workout, and that would take them about an hour. All right, so after six months, they collected some data. And what they collected was a bone mineral density or a DEXA scan. So they did DEXAs on everybody before and after. And then they looked at bone turnover markers. They looked at CTX, which is the, the breakdown marker that I like. And then they looked at osteocalcin, which is a marker of bone buildup. We use a different marker, but this is a reasonable marker to use in this study. And then they also measured strength. They measured both static strength and dynamic strength. All right, so let's talk about bone mineral density first, because this is probably what most of you are here for. So the bone mineral density did go up even after only six months, which is a really relatively short period for a DEXA scan to show any improvement, but it went up by 1.5% in six months. Now, I would argue that that's kind of within the margin of error of a DEXA anyway, but there were enough people and it was consistent that that seems like that's a, a good result. And what's really interesting is that the resistance group did not see an increase, which I would kind of expect over that short period of time with that limited activity, probably not enough weight, not enough activity, and also that neither of those exercises were technically uh, gravity involved. So we know that if you take gravity out of the equation, it reduces the impact. So I'm not surprised to see that those two exercises did not result in a significant increase in hip bone mineral density, which is what they were measuring. And the increase that we saw in the whole body vibration group was only in the hips and actually was not in the spine. Um, so this could potentially be a, a really good tool for people that have hip specific um, osteoporosis and worry about the hip. I'm always worried about the hip with my background as an orthopedic surgeon. Um, other interesting things is that the static increase in strength was the same in both the whole body vibration as well as the uh, resistance group. So both groups saw an increase in static strength, meaning how much force you can hold, but dynamic strength was actually better in the whole body vibration group, uh, although not significantly, but a trend toward uh, more strength improvement in the vibration group rather than in the um, resistance group. And two other interesting findings is that there did seem to be an increase in balance, so improved balance in the whole body vibration group, and we did not see that in the other two groups. And then also a reduction in fat mass in uh, both the whole body vibration group as well as the resistance group. So some added benefits there as well. All right, sorry to interrupt this content, but if you are enjoying this, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications. If you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them so that they can continue on their own bone health journey. And lastly, if you wanna learn about how we manage osteoporosis and other tips and tricks that you can do on your own, please sign up for our masterclass. Look for the link in the description below. Okay, so we have determined in that one study that there does appear to be an improvement in bone mineral density, and that's cool. Now, what other things can we learn about the research? Well, I did find another study. This one is from 2007, and it's another randomized control trial. So they were looking again at a vibration group, a resistance group, and a control group, but the outcomes were different. This group was really looking more for balance and reduction in falls, and we know that ultimately, falls are often what cause the fractures that we are trying to prevent with optimal bone health and the bone health journey, so falls are important too. Now, a couple of differences from this study to the last study. This one was for a longer period of time. It was for 12 months, and again, they were comparing vibration versus resistance and controls. Um, they did not measure bone mineral density. We're not really talking about bones here. We're talking about fall prevention. And what they found is that the whole body vibration group had a significantly improved um, ability to withstand fall. So they put the uh, participants through all kinds of different activities where they basically tried to stimulate a fall in one way or another. 
and the participants that trained on the, the whole body vibration machine were more resistant to falls than were the exercise group, than were the control, certainly. And so the results of the study were basically to say that this machine, despite its benefits in bone mineral density and potentially increases in strength, just simply will increase your ability to resist the forces of a fall. And there's a lot of benefit in that as well. All right, so what did this little tour through the research community looking at whole body vibration show me? Well, it showed me that there is some evidence to support the use of these machines. I did not find that many great studies on it, but there are some studies that do show benefit for both bones, building muscle, improving balance, and reducing falls. So all of those things are important. Now the question is, is, is this something that my patients should be putting into their program? And that's obviously the question that you probably want to answer for yourself. And the truth is it really depends. It depends on what your resources are. These machines are relatively expensive. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you are really focusing on spine health, is this going to be the machine that's going to, to make the difference for you? Maybe not based on the couple of studies that I talked about. Now, if you're looking at femoral neck or hip health, if you're looking at reducing falls, if you're looking at improving muscle strength and something that you can do in a shorter period of time than an hour long workout, then yeah, maybe this is the right thing for you. Just keep in mind that these devices are relatively expensive. You're talking a thousand dollars or more for a good unit. There are several companies out there that sell these. The two that I've seen that have specific devices and protocols for bone health, one is called Power Plate and the other one is called Merodyne Live. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, um, but we'll put a picture of it up here for you. But those two companies both have products that are specifically designed for bone health and are going to hit in that right frequency and amplitude zone that's going to be best for bone health. And so when you're looking at those or potentially other units, what you want to keep in mind is that you want to keep the frequency or at least have the ability to keep the frequency low, especially when starting out. Same thing with the amplitude. You want to have a really easy setting to get started because where this can get you into trouble is if it causes a fall. So just like I talk about with resistance training, with any other type of activity, the last thing you want to do is get hurt because that's going to set you back so much. So if you get on one of these plates and it bounces you all over the place and it causes you to have an injury, clearly that did not help you on your bone health journey. So you really want to be able to start low and start small. And so the definition in the literature is that a low frequency device is something that is less than 40 hertz. So 30 to 40 hertz is what was in that study that we talked about. And then the amplitude really starting at like a millimeter or a millimeter and a half up to, you know, two, two and a half millimeters. It doesn't need to be more than that the higher frequency and the higher amplitude that you get, the more you're gonna have an impact on muscles rather than bone. And that's okay too, as long as you're ready for that. So you might see some very fit individuals on these things and they're going crazy underneath them. That's not a good starting point. That might be a good goal depending on where you are, but definitely not a good starting point. So when you're looking at these things, decide if this is the right thing for you. If you can get one in your house, it's probably gonna be really helpful, but Use your resources wisely and see if this is the right thing for you. All right, well, thanks for making it to the end of the whole body vibration video. If you really liked this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications. If you know anybody that would enjoy this, please share it with them. If you wanna learn more about how we do this, look for the masterclass link in the description below. And lastly, I wanna hear from you. I love the comments and interactions that we get through the comment section, the requests for new videos and topics. The interaction has been amazing. So we really wanna keep this going. Leave comments below. We'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks again. Thank you.